Hi, I'm Amy O'Donnell on behalf of Bernina World of Sewing in Raleigh in Wilmington, North Carolina, and welcome to month six of our Feathered Friends Quote Along. This month, we're gonna be making 18 of these blocks right here, and this is called the Sawtooth Patchwork Block, and we're gonna be making a quantity of 18, and this month, we're not going to be sewing them to our center section because next month, we're gonna make 18 of the Feathered Friends block, and then in the following month, we're gonna put them all together. So um, this month is gonna be a lot of work. I'm warning you ahead of time. It may seem tedious at times, and so you wanna make sure that you break down the, the work into segments so that you don't feel overwhelmed and you don't stress your shoulders and your arms from all the cutting and trimming and sewing that we're gonna be doing. Each of the blocks contains a quantity of five square and square blocks and a quantity of four half square triangles. So we've done the half square triangles and we've done the square and square block already, but we're gonna do a review of the construction anyway just to make sure that we're all on track. This month we're gonna be using a lot of our little accoutrements. We're gonna be definitely using our Blade Saver Thread Cutter because this month is very chain piecing friendly. We're gonna be using our Tucker Trimmer to trim up those half square triangles that we're gonna be making because each block has four half square triangles in it. And we're also gonna be using our Square Squared tool um, for the trimming process after we've made the square and square blocks. And we're also gonna be using our turning cutting mat if you have one. It's gonna come in super handy because these blocks all have to be trimmed. And um, like I said, it can be tedious and this will help take the stress off if you can just turn it instead of having to move the block every time. We're also gonna be getting a lot of use out of our portable design board. We're gonna be using this to lay out our blocks and to tote our pieces around our sewing room. And it's a good secure way because the fabric kind of sticks to this batting. So that's gonna be great too. You're gonna to wanna to shorten your stitch length again this month to 2.0 since all these blocks are, maybe even a little less than 2.0, because all these blocks are gonna be trimmed and we want those stitches to be super secure. One thing I wanna give you a tip this month, we're gonna be using all of our fabrics. This is my fabric key for the pink version that I'm making. We're gonna be using all of our fabrics and so uh, we wanna make sure that we keep everything labeled and organized so that we don't mix up the squares from the half square triangles um, with the square square blocks. We don't wanna do any of that mixing. We do not wanna be best friends with our seam ripper. We want this to be an uneventful, fun sewing month for us. Don't try to make all of your blocks at once. Maybe one evening you'll cut all of your half square triangles and maybe sew them and maybe trim them the next evening or the next time you have 15 minutes. You can get a lot done if you work on it 15 or 20 minutes at a time. Um, it doesn't have to be a sewing marathon. It can be just a little bit here and there. And personally, I always find that it helps to soothe my nerves at the end of a long day. If I can just have even a half hour at my machine, it's just a good feeling. But get some cutting done and label the pieces. Make sure you label what you've cut um, so that you can uh, keep track of everything. Um, let's see, I once took a class from an instructor and she said, she was a British instructor and she said, okay, it's time to clear the decks. And she would, it was an all day class and there were several different parts to it. And so she wanted us to always clear off our sewing space before we started the next part. And I think that's really important with this block to clear the decks so that we can be organized and you know what we're doing. Let me see what else. When we cut the background fabric, it's gonna be the centers of our square and square blocks. And then the other fabrics are gonna be, um, the other two and a half inch squares are gonna go around the edge of our square and square blocks. And then the three inch squares from the dark and light medium fabrics are gonna be used for the half square triangles. But we'll go through that um, when we look at the cutting diagrams coming up. So clear the decks, fill your bobbin and get ready because we're ready to start month six of this fun project. Here we go. In looking at the cutting diagram uh, for the background fabric, it, the background squares are gonna be the centers of our square and squared blocks. And on the Deb Tucker ruler, it tells you how big to cut the center square um, for the two inch finished blocks. And it's right here along this edge. But to cut 90 of those would make you wanna poke your eyes out. I mean because they have to be cut one or maybe two at a time, and it's, it would be very, very tedious. 
So instead, we're recommending that you cut um, the background fabric for those centers um, to be one and fifteen sixteenths of an inch square. And you might say, gee, one and fifteen sixteenths, my ruler doesn't have that mark on it. So what we want you to do is make it a generous one and seven eighths cut. So, and I've got a picture I'm going to insert right here to show you of this yellow fabric. And I've got it kind of lined up where it would be for a one and generous seven eighths cut. So that's how I recommend you cut your squares. When I made the sample quilt earlier this year, I cut mine at regular one and seven eighths and it came out okay, but I think a generous one and seven eighths would make my, my blocks just a little bit crisper. Um, so that's my suggestion to do that. So let's go ahead and we're gonna start talking about the cutting of the um, fabrics. But I wanted to explain that little glitch about the one and 15 sixteenths and the one in, which is really a one and generous seven eighths okay if you have any questions about this stuff just you know email me or message me on facebook and i'll be happy to help you out so let's look at the cutting diagrams in general out of the dark fabric we're going to be cutting 36 three inch squares and we're also going to be cutting 36 three inch squares out of the light medium fabric and those are going to be for your half square triangles and the rest of the cuts we're going to make out of the colored fabric the two and a quarter inch squares from the medium and the two and a quarter inch squares from the light are going to be used to um, for the square and square blocks to surround the one and generous seven eighths background squares. So you can kind of see the cutting is no mystery on this one. Uh, you will need your long cutting ruler and um, just cut carefully. That's all I can say. It's a lot of cutting involved. So pace yourself. And when we cut those pieces um, that are going to go around the square and square block, when we cut those two and a quarter inch squares, then we want to go ahead and cut those each once on the diagonal. And so here we've got all the pieces cut for our square and square blocks. And that's a lot of square and square blocks. There's five per block. And these are the squares that we have cut for our half square triangles. We're going to quickly review the half square triangle process. You want to um, take your marker, whether you use a chalk marker or you know, heat-soluble pen or a soap sliver, and you want to draw a diagonal line from corner to corner. You, you know, you want to pair them up like we've done before. You know, sandwich them on top of each other, lined up, and then you want to draw that diagonal line. And we'll sew a quarter inch on each side of that diagonal line, and then cut. Like you can see, we've. We've cut them on the line, press to the dark side, and now we're going to use our tucker trimmer to trim them. And you can see we've used it and we've trimmed all four sides. So that's the half square triangle. Now we're going to go into making the square and square blocks. So we'll take a triangle and we'll put it on each side, center it on each side, opposite sides of our center piece. And you want to pay attention to your color placement because these are not all identical and you want to lay out what you're going to make and have them in separate piles. So we've sewed a quarter inch on the line and we have pressed to the dark. We're going to place the next two triangles on opposite sides. Sew a one quarter inch seam along each edge. Press the seams open, not open, but I mean to the dark. Press, so press it open so you can see your, your block in the center. And now it's time to trim. And so we're using our square and squared trimmer to trim. And you can see I had cut mine one and seven eighths. Had I made them a one and generous seven eighths, I think my squares would have been a little bigger. But I did preserve my quarter inch and that's what's most important. And I'm trimming um, a using my square squared trimmer. And now I've got my block all trimmed up. And this is where your turning cutting mat will come in really handy. But you can see had my center square been just a tad bigger, um, it would have made a little bit better of a block, but it's fine. You know, my quilt's hanging up in the store and I don't think it looks all that bad. This process of making these square and square blocks is very chain piecing friendly. So I'm just showing you how you can lay them out at your machine. You can eyeball them to make sure they're centered and then you can start feeding them through the machine and you know, make it kind of a factory style thing. And so that's what I did with mine. But you do want to be very careful with your color placement because you need 
so many of each color combination. So maybe make the 18 center blocks first and then focus on the um, blocks that go around the periphery. But the chain piecing is really the way to go with this. It makes it a lot easier. And remember to shorten that stitch length. One thing to remember is when you are sewing together the ones that have two different colored sides, you wanna put the opposite colors on the sides. Um, so you wanna sew, like I did, the dark purple versus the lighter purple, put those on opposite sides, and then um, it makes it easier to make sure you're doing it right. But you'll get your rhythm, you'll get into your rhythm with this. But like I said, it is very chain piecing friendly. And now we've got our blocks on our turning cutting mat and we are trimming two sides and then turning and trimming the other two sides. And this is our blocks in process. I made all my center blocks first and then I um, did my other blocks. I make it look easy in the video showing piles of finished squares. It's a lot of work involved. This quilt is a labor of love and it's gonna be beautiful when you're done, but this is where it gets tedious as our center gets bigger. So now I've got my square, my um, you know, my components for my blocks all made, and I'm laying them out on my portable design board. This thing is a lifesaver. Um, what I always like to do is have one block completely made the way it's supposed to be, and then I pattern all my other ones after it. You know how when you have surgery and you go in, they say, "What's the procedure?" They do like the timeout. Today we're going to operate on the left thumb. You know, you want to do that with these blocks and make sure that they are the way, facing the way that they're supposed to be with the colors, because it can get crazy, um, you know, when you look at this for a long time. So I've sewing my rows together, and I've chosen to press my seams open, and the strip stick is like super handy for this, to press these seams without disturbing those other seams of your half square triangles or your square square blocks. You can press these seams open with ease. And I've got, you know, laying them out methodically, make sure to minimize my time with my friend the seam ripper love that guy but not every day and here I am using my strip stick to press my seams open and when you have finished if you've sewn your accurate quarter inch which, which we've talked about during this process the quarter inch seam is and good trimming is is very important you're going to come up with a six and a half inch block and it's going to be beautiful and there I have it there laying underneath my tucker trimmer. And there is my finished block right there. And so um, we need to make 18 of these. So as my mother-in-law would say, gird your loins and you know, do it a little bit at a time. Clear the decks and enjoy the process because it's gonna be beautiful when it's done. And here are my 18 finished blocks. So we're gonna make the half square triangles, the square and square blocks. We're gonna sew an accurate quarter inch seam and we're gonna trim accurately. And this is what you're gonna come out with. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's gonna be beautiful and it's gonna be because you made it. Thanks a lot, everybody. Next month, we're gonna be doing the Feathered Friends block and it's gonna be awesome. We're into the home stretch now. Have a great month, everybody. Bye-bye.